Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today is a really exciting day, and I know I say that a lot of the time, but of course I'm always excited because who doesn't like talking about technology? Well, today is a day that I've been waiting for for a long time, and so have a lot of you. It's the unboxing of the Unihertz Titan Pocket. Yes, it showed up today in this fancy little box, and we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna take it out of the box, we're gonna show it off, see what all's in there, and see how good this phone actually is. This is not a full review. This is just a unboxing first impressions after using the phone for a couple hours, setting it up, fingerprint sensor, biometrics, get a feel for it and the keyboard, some stuff like that. So exciting. But before we get into that, I do want to say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, you've been missing out a long time and I'm glad you finally showed up. And if you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Now let's talk about the Unihertz Titan Pocket. All right, exciting day is finally here. We have the Unihertz Titan Pocket. So finally, got my hands on it. For those of you who are in the Kickstarter, I'm sure you're happy to see this because they won't start shipping them out till about September. So now we can go ahead and do this unboxing, get a look at it so you guys can get a first-hand look at what it looks like. Got the handy-dandy unboxing tool. Cut through the box there. Go ahead and close this for safety purposes. All right, let's take the box off of this and see what we got. And here we go. Now this is a review unit. This may not be exactly what you end up with in your commercial box whenever you get it. So just putting that caveat out there now, but I think it's probably gonna be pretty similar. And voila, there we have it, the Unihertz Titan Pocket. It's actually got a pretty nice feel to it. I like that you can handle it really one-handed a lot better than the original Titan. Big, gigantic phone. It was nice, uh, it wasn't my absolute favorite, but this is pretty cool. Definitely a much better keyboard, much more springy and tactile here, I like that. You can probably hear that on the microphone. 3.1 inch screen, 720p resolution. You got the volume rockers over here. You got the SIM card slot, USB-C connector on the bottom. We have a dedicated convenience key over here and power button, so that's nice. You got a headphone jack up top, also the IR blaster, camera LED flash on the back. Let's go ahead and press the power button. Maybe this is the power button. One of these is the power button. There we go. Power button, convenience key. The red one's the convenience key. Let's see what else is in here. We got some foam. Got a charging brick, so that's nice. Good to go there. And see what the rating is. Five volts. Doesn't say how many amps. Probably just standard quick charge. Got a charging cable here. Which is going to be a USB type... A to USB Type C, so you're covered there. SIM ejector tool, and that appears to be it for what's inside the box. So let me go ahead and get this set up, and we'll come back and talk more about the Titan Pocket. Oh, you're still here. And so is this, the Unihertz Titan Pocket. I'm really excited about this, and a lot of you follow my channel because of the BlackBerry stuff. You follow me because of the physical keyboard stuff. I've got my beloved BlackBerry Q10 right here, which I'm going to take out of the pouch right now. So we can see these side by side. These two keyboard warriors right here. Now, it, a lot of similarity here. You've got the original BlackBerry Q10. Then you look over here at the Titan Pocket. There's obviously a lot here that has transferred over. And a lot of people probably have some hangups. It's not a BlackBerry. But so many people complain about Blackberries that are running Android not being Blackberries anyway. So I don't really care at this point. But... Looking at these two phones, I'm really happy to have a new physical keyboard phone. It's running Android 11, which they actually got a really nice implementation of. And just so you know, this phone is not coming out until like September. They're going to start manufacturing them in August. They got all the money they needed to get the Kickstarter going within like five hours, which is a big thing. And now, September, they're going to start shipping them. So they sent this out to me early. I guess because they like my videos and they know that I like keyboard phones. So who else to test it out? than, you know, me getting my hands on one. So I'm glad I can 
check this out and show it off for you guys and tell you what I think about it. So I've been using this a couple of hours so far and I actually really like it. And I don't know if it's, I like it so much because I've been waiting so long for another keyboard phone. You know, we haven't had a new Blackberry in like three years, but they did a lot of things right in here, especially considering that it's a, like basically a Kickstarter company. They start a Kickstarter, they get some money, they make a new phone. They seem to do it pretty well. I mean, they've had the Unihertz Jelly, the Jelly 2, the Atom, the Titan. They've had quite a few of them. So this guy right here, I had no doubt they were going to bring it to market. Handset speaker works fine. I made a couple of phone calls on it. Also, you've got the convenience key over here is what I'm going to call it. It's programmable. So you can do a long press, a short press, or a double press. I had mine where it doesn't do anything when you press it because I don't like to accidentally bump into it and have it do something. But for mine, if you long press it, it turns on the flashlight, which I really like because I hate always having to go to the shader, pull it down. And then for a double press, mine pulls up the Google Assistant. So I think it's pretty good. I, I like that. Also, you can do the shortcut keys with the keyboard here, which is also touch sensitive, just like on the Blackberry. So the Priv, the Passport, the Key 2, the Key 1, those phones, you get the same functionality there. Works nicely. Go into Twitter here, scroll up and down. I think this is better than on the Titan. The keyboard on here is better than the Titan. You don't have to press it as hard. You don't have to press it as far. It doesn't have that rubbery feeling to it. It doesn't have those thick keys because it's not water resistant. Don't throw this keyboard and this phone in the water. Don't do it. So I like the keys. The keyboard layout is good. You've got the symbol key, the back key, the shift key, the function key, the alt key, the menu key. There's a whole bunch of keys here. It's kind of reminiscent of the tool belt and you can program these keys to do certain different things. So if you don't want it to do what it does, you can kind of mess with that. You can flip some of them back and forth like the alt and the symbol key, I think. I, I think that's which one. I, there's a whole lot to cover on this and I'm gonna dive in that more in the full review. The space bar, a little on the small side. It's definitely more prominent and you can see here that it's angled up. See if I can get through there. See, it's got a bit of a wedge there. It's angled up higher than the other keys so you can feel it with your thumb. It works out fine. I just wish it were a little bit wider. I've been typing on here. The keys are angled up and they're not flat. It's a nice little kind of ramp feeling. They're, they're very good. The tactility and the size of the keys is good. Uh, the only thing that gets me is a little kind of narrow trying to trying to hit the keys on the outside, but I think it's just one of those things I'm going to have to get used to because I haven't been using one of these in a while. Really and truly, it's the same thing and the same thing I experienced with the Q10 whenever I was using it here a little while back. Those ones on the edge, they're, they're just a little harder to hit. Um, the back key, the menu key, those work fine. The fingerprint sensor, so check this out. Got a fingerprint sensor right here. There we go. Works perfectly fine. I, it's, it's nice and accurate. I have no problems with it. And then if you're like inside of an app, so let's go into Twitter and you hit it, it goes back to the home screen. And I actually really like that a lot too. So you got that covered there. Turn the volume up here real quick. Let you hear the speaker. I'll fire up Boom Beach. That's something I like to do. It has a nice loud startup sound. So we'll hit that. Nice loud speaker, I and mean, I think it's got some good volume. It's got a single speaker, it's not stereo. It's got a headphone jack on the top, an IR blaster for those guys who like to still control their TV, maybe an air conditioner, whatever, you can you can do that. Volume rockers, SIM card over here. Dual SIM card slot, or you can use a SIM card and an SD card for expandable storage. Spec-wise, 128 gigs of storage, six gigs of RAM, MediaTek Helio P70 processor, 3.1 inch screen at 720p resolution. The resolution looks sharp and crisp. I think it's right around about 300 pixels per inch. I think like the 280, 290 ballpark. Don't quote me on that. I'll have to look at the numbers later. Just know that it's good. I, I think that it's fine. The only issue you're going to have here is probably just how small the screen is. It's a 3.1 inch screen. So this isn't like the big gigantic phones that we're used to using. You can only display so much on the screen at once. So if you like to do a lot of social media stuff, I mean, here's Unihertz made this Twitter post about the Titan holster for this new leather holster. And you, you can't even hardly see all the information on there inside the one tweet. So you're going to be doing a lot of scrolling a lot more than usual. What I really like here, it's so nice. I wanted this so badly. Yeah, It was so frustrating whenever we got Android 8.1 and they stopped. We didn't get Android 9 on the key series devices because we would have got swipe gestures. Well, 
I enjoyed the swipe gesture so much on BlackBerry 10, I hated it using a BlackBerry with Android 7 and 8 and 6 because you didn't have the swipe gestures. It was all menu buttons. So I think we would have been a really, I think it would have been a game changing experience if we could have gotten Android 9 or 10 on one of those key devices because then we could do all these great things, all the swiping. It's so nice. You don't have to use the buttons all the time. And that's what frustrates me so much going back to the key devices now because I'm so used to swipe gestures and they got to keep hitting the back and the menu button all the time. So, and the home button. So I'm glad they got rid of that. I'm glad this has Android 11 software implementation so far. Seems pretty good. They have a mini mode on here where if something doesn't fit the screen properly, you can use that mini mode to run it to try and get it to work properly because apps aren't used to running on a tiny screen like this. There's a lot of built-in bloatware that's hard to get rid of. Same thing with the Titan when I had that. I shoved it all in one folder. I'll deal with it later. This is day one. Wi-Fi works fine. There is no 5G. There is no Band 71 LTE. This probably won't be the best for the emerging network market. So if you have T-Mobile and you just got like 5G or just got enhanced LTE out in your area, it's probably because of Band 71 or Band 66. It doesn't have 71. I think it has 66. I'll have to double check that. I'll cover that for the full review. There's only so much I can remember at once. Um, yeah, the keyboard has been fine so far. The key press is nice. It's more clicky. You can probably hear that. It reminds me quite a bit of one of the BlackBerry, actual BlackBerry phones. It's so much better than the Titan keyboard. It is a little harder to press than most Blackberries are straight out of the box. So it's definitely fatiguing my thumbs a little bit, especially not using a keyboard phone here lately. And then we also have the shortcut keys built in as well. So you can hit T, you can do a short press or a long press. So mine is a short press for T. It brings up Twitter, which is my favorite. I use that all the time. And then if I hold down T, it brings up the Creator Studio. Well, I gotta get out of the menu. I gotta get out of that app. This doesn't have the speed key like the BlackBerry Key 2. So you press and hold the T. My long press, it pulls up my YouTube Creator Studio. So very functional that way. And it gives you a lot of the different features that we're used to having on our BlackBerry Key Series devices except in this new modern package with the Unihertz phone. So yeah, there are some question marks out there about security. There's question marks out there about software updates. There's question marks out there about operating system updates. Very much a Kickstarter thing, but they seem like they've gotten better. Most people seem to be pretty happy with what they did with the Titan. They did give it Android 10 to my knowledge, like they said they were going to. So I think they've got a pretty good track record here. This is going to cost you $299 MSRP. If you got in on this on the early bird special, you got one heck of a deal. At 299, I think this phone is really solid. I can't tell you an accurate gauge on software and security stuff because, well, it's pre-release. So it's not gonna be the same as when it comes out. As far as the camera, I was surprised. It does seem like it's a little bit better than the one on the Titan. It throws me off though because the camera's up over here, eight megapixel there, you got a 16 megapixel on the back. I'll snap a picture real quick just so you can see that. There we go, so we snapped a picture. I mean, I think it looks all right for a cheap phone. <laughs> I, I expected it to, to not look this nice. I had taken some pictures outside. I'll cover that stuff more when I get to the full review. I'm going to make a lot of videos about this phone. More stuff diving in on the keyboard. More stuff diving in on the performance as far as the camera and all sorts of things. So I like it. It's a very, very good attempt at a phone. 4,000 milliamp battery. It's got plenty of juice to get you through the day. Plenty of power for this small screen. And this is just day one stuff. I mean, I just got this like five, six hours ago. So I've been having fun with it, been getting it set up, and it seems to be working pretty nice so far. So that's all I've got in this one. Don't want to paint any like overly false expectations on stuff because I really haven't had a chance to sit in. I'm going to have to review this over the next week, two, three, four weeks as I test it. I use it. I've got my SIM card in here right now, my primary one. So I'm going to give you all, all the info I can, but there we have it. The Unihertz Titan Pocket is pretty neat. So that's all I've got, guys. Feel free to sound off in the comments all your questions, your concerns, your comments. I will try to address them as much and as well as I can. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out, especially when new Titan Pocket videos come out. So thanks a lot, guys. As always, I appreciate you watching. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you guys next time.